In this video, we will focus on the three assumed cost flow methods and conclude with the effects of the different cost flow assumptions on the financial statements. We discussed the flow of cost in the previous chapter. As a reminder, beginning inventory plus the cost of goods purchased equals the cost of goods available for sale. As goods are sold, they are assigned to the cost of goods sold. Those goods that are not sold by the end of the accounting period represent ending inventory. To illustrate the three assumed cost flow methods, we will use the data for Houston Electronics. Houston had a total of 1,000 units available to sell during the period, and that represents the beginning inventory plus purchases. The total cost of 1,000 units is $12,000. This represents the cost of goods available for sale. A physical inventory taken at December 31st determined that there were 450 units in ending inventory. So Houston sold 550 units, and this is found by simply taking 1,000 and subtracting the 450 units. To determine the cost of the 550 units that were sold, the cost of goods sold, we will determine the ending inventory and subtract that value from the cost of goods available for sale, which is $12,000. The value assigned to the ending inventory will depend upon which cost flow method we use. FIFO assumes that the earliest goods purchased are the first to be sold. It often parallels the actual physical flow of merchandise. Companies determine the cost of ending inventory by taking the unit cost of the most recent purchase and working backward until all units of inventory have been costed or accounted for. Under FIFO, we determine the cost of ending inventory by taking the unit cost of the most recent purchase and working backward until all units of inventory have been costed or accounted for. We will price the 450 units of ending inventory using the most recent prices. So we're going to start with the most recent purchase. In this example, it's 400 units at $13 on November 27th, and the remaining 50 units are priced using the unit cost of the second most recent purchase, which is $12 on August 24th. So we will assign 400 units, the unit cost of $13, and the remaining 50 units using the unit cost of $12 to arrive at our ending inventory of $5,800. We calculate the cost of goods sold by subtracting the cost of the units not sold, or ending inventory, from the cost of goods available for sale. In this example, we had $12,000 of goods available for sale. Of that $12,000, we assigned $5,800 to our ending inventory, which means $6,200 will be assigned to the cost of goods sold. Companies also can calculate cost of goods sold by pricing the 550 units sold using the prices of the first 550 units acquired. There were 300 units purchased on August 24th. Only 250 units are assumed sold because 50 of these units were assumed unsold and included in the ending inventory. LIFO assumes that the latest goods purchased are the first to be sold. It seldom coincides with the actual physical flow of inventory. Under this method, the cost of the latest goods purchased are the first to be recognized in determining cost of goods sold. Companies obtain the cost of the ending inventory by taking the unit cost of the earliest goods available for sale and working forward until all units of inventory have been costed or accounted for. Under LIFO, we determine the cost of the ending inventory by taking the unit cost of the earliest goods available for sale and working forward 
until all units of inventory have been costed or accounted for. We will price the 450 units of ending inventory using the earliest prices. The first purchase was 100 units at $10 on January 1st. We'll then work forward to the next purchase. In this instance, it's 200 units at $11. And then the remaining 150 units needed are priced at $12 per unit. So when we assign costs to our ending inventory, we're going to use 100 units at $10. We're going to work our way forward to our next purchase of 200 units at $11. And then finally, we need a remaining 150 units to account for the total ending inventory of 450, which means we take 150 at $12 which means our ending inventory is valued at $5,000. We calculate the cost of goods sold by subtracting the cost of the units not sold or ending inventory from the cost of goods available for sale. The cost of goods available for sale was $12,000. We assigned $5,000 to the ending inventory, which means our cost of goods sold is $7,000. We can also calculate cost of goods sold by pricing the 550 units sold using the prices of the last 550 units acquired. The 300 units purchased on August 24th, only 150 units are assumed sold. The other 150 units were assumed unsold or included in the ending inventory. The average cost method allocates the cost of goods available for sale on the basis of the weighted average unit cost incurred. The weighted average unit cost is calculated by dividing the cost of goods available for sale by the total units available for sale. The company then applies that weighted average unit cost to the units on hand to determine the cost of ending inventory. The weighted average unit cost is calculated by dividing the cost of goods available for sale by the total units available for sale. The company then applies the weighted average unit cost, in this example is $12, to the units on hand. Again, we said the ending inventory was 450 units. You simply multiply by the weighted average unit cost of $12 and we will assign $5,400 to the ending inventory. We calculate the cost of goods sold by subtracting the cost of the units not sold or ending inventory from the cost of goods available for sale. If the cost of goods available for sale is $12,000 and we've assigned $5,400 to the ending inventory, the cost of goods sold is $6,600. We can verify the cost of goods sold of $6,600 by multiplying the units sold, we sold 550 units, times the weighted average unit cost of $12 to arrive at a cost of goods sold of $6,600. To understand why companies might choose a particular cost flow method, let's examine the effects of the different cost flow assumptions on the financial statements of Houston Electronics. The cost of goods available for sale, which is $12,000, is the same under each of the three inventory cost flow methods. The ending inventories and the cost of goods sold are different. This difference is due to the unit cost that the company allocated to cost of goods sold and to ending inventory. In periods of rising prices, like Houston Electronics, the cost flow assumptions impacts net income. FIFO reports the highest net income, in this instance $2,310, and LIFO reports the lowest net income, $1,750. Average cost will fall somewhere in the middle. 
Why would a company want to report lower earnings or choose LIFO? The reason is that LIFO results in the lowest income taxes because of lower net income during times of rising prices. Houston Electronics income taxes are $750 under LIFO versus $990 under FIFO. The tax savings of $240 makes more cash available for use in the business. In periods of rising prices, FIFO reports the highest net income, LIFO the lowest, and average cost falls in the middle. If prices are falling, the results from the use of FIFO and LIFO are reversed. The solutions to this learning exercise will be provided in another document. This learning exercise is similar to your homework. You will need to calculate the cost of goods available for sale before valuing ending inventory and cost of goods sold. Start with the beginning inventory and then list the purchases in chronological order. You will need to list both units and unit cost, as well as determine a total cost. The solution to this learning exercise will be provided in another document.